Yo, um, this video, um, I'm just going over a, a tragic event that happened to a couple. Um, the couple's name uh, is uh, Jessica Ross and uh, Travion Isaiah Taylor Sr. If I say the name wrong, I do apologize. Um, what happened is a situation that happened at Southern Regional Medical Center in which his uh, partner was giving birth to their son. I'm guessing it may be their firstborn son um, and had the same name as him. He was a junior. And what happened is, is that, and we have to say allegedly because the case is still ongoing, that the baby was decapitated. Um, so they said the issue for it happening is due to, uh, I think it's shoulder this dysphoria or something like that I do apologize but here's the couple here right here just beautiful couple right here um, and it was them that end up losing um, their child uh, they said that the doctor's name who's dr. Tracy uh, st. Julian who is right here who before she got review bombed, she had five star rating reviews. Um, and after this, they just went to town on her and Google. They just review bombed the mess out of her. Um, and she's supposed to be, you know, gynecology uh, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how long she's been practicing exactly, but it looks like she's out of Georgia based on this information here and what happened was from what I've heard is that the baby was in a condition called shoulder uh, dyscosia I hope I said that right and I'm going to read the definition here it's basic when the shoulder dys uh, dyscosia is a condition that happens when one or both of your baby's shoulders get stuck during vaginal vaginal delivery I'm sorry I can't even focus to even read it um, there are no signs and no way to prevent the condition unfortunately um, causes may include having a large baby having a small pelvis or being in the wrong position severe complications can occur including nerve injuries to the baby now here's the thing these doctors are supposed to be trained on this condition to begin with in the first place so they should know what to do in these conditions. When I first heard about it happening, I'm sitting here thinking, how did the baby get decapitated? I'm like, don't doctors usually try to go in with their hands and try to slide the baby out past the shoulders and if they can't, they do a cesarean section? Well, come to find out that this doctor here, they said did the cesarean section, but she, I think they said she did it too late. and because of that along with they said she tried to pull the baby allegedly tried to pull the baby out that it ended up decapitating the baby now the fact that the hospital tried to hide it try to hide it so you mean to tell me one of your doctors kills a child whether it's on purpose or accident but you had the audacity to go against the Hippocratic Oath and turn around and try to hide the, the incident happening. That's what I'm not feeling. I'm not. I'm not rocking with that. I'm not rolling with that. If there's an issue going on, the doctors should have had the patients back 100%, right? And in this situation, I feel like the doctors care more about their image and their money than indeed the patient. So if you're running an institution. Malpractice happens all the time. It happens a lot more than people think. But the situation is, it's like, as a doctor, I feel that if you're in the wrong, you should admit that you're in the wrong. Say that you're in the wrong and try to fix it. Because this, this is what we have to understand. It's not going to be 100%. You can train a doctor on every field for years. Even doctors who've done, done the same thing for 30 years We'll mess up every once in a while because we are human. 
our body go through changes. Our body goes through different things. I'm not making excuses. I'm simply stating facts. Is that we as humans not going to be 100% perfect. But that doctor in that situation should have already been trained to deal with something like that. But it's the fact that after it happened, you're telling these people don't seek an autopsy. You're telling these people to cremate the baby as quickly as possible. You gave them the baby back and it was wrapped up so tight that it looked like the head was just set on there. This child come into the world and the first thing they experience is that happening to them. And then they're gone. And then instead of the hospital standing up and coming to the forefront and admitting that they're wrong, they try to hide it. That's what pisses me off. I think that's what's pissing a lot of people off. And I do pray the creator and the ancestors to look over this family. I do pray for them, uh, you know, to be protected by the ancestors during their time of grief. They're doing the right thing by following this lawsuit. That's that's my personal opinion. I think they're doing the right thing by, you know, following this lawsuit. Okay? Because my thing is, why would you, in any circumstance, see, see, here's the thing. A lot of hospitals hide my my practice. Why? Money. It's money. It ain't cause no oops, I'm sorry I messed up. It's money. The almighty dollar, which dollar really has no value until we give value to it. Because if it was based on morals, if it was based on the oath, they would have dealt with that situation way better than they did. I feel like as a doctor in that situation, if I messed up something like that, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself, even if it's an accident. But at the same time, I'm not going to try to hide it. I need to be a man and, and come to these and come to that family and say, I messed up really, really bad. This would happen. This is why it happened. But instead, she did what she knew she shouldn't have done. And you trying to hide it, that's an omission of guilt. So th to me, that was no pure accident. To me, it felt like, and I'm, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for anybody else. But when I look at the situation, to me, it felt like the doctor got impatient delivering the baby and trying to hurry up and pull the baby out. That's what it feels like to me, okay? I can't turn around and say that's what actually happened, okay? I'm saying that's how I feel and that's what it kind of looks like, okay? So I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that's how I feel. And I feel like like she got impatient and was like, oh, she didn't want to wait to have this baby delivered. And so she decided to turn around and try to hurry up and do that. Then the cesarean section and then whatever happened between the pulling out in a cesarean section, it was actually end up doing what happened to that child. So, my thing is that, and if you look at the man in the background, he looks, he, he looks kind of upset. He, he, he looks upset. I don't know who that man is. It's probably one of the lawyers, but he, he looks very like you know how you are in a crowd of people and you're upset and you're emotional and you're trying to hold it in that's what it looks like he's doing um and it, it it's it's the audacity of the hospital to try to hide it that's the main problem i'm tired of hospitals doing that your money is not more important in the life when you sat there and chose to become a doctor it wasn't about the money you knew you're going to be working long grueling hours you knew you was going to be tired. You knew that all the hours you work is basically going to almost equate the minimum wage. You knew this. And you decided to be a doctor to save lives. So if you can't save a life, you need to be responsible for that as well. Because you're not going to save everyone. I, I've, if somebody knows a doctor who saved every single life, okay. But doctors know from the jump, they're not going to be able to save every single life. And we as people need to understand that doctors are not going to save everybody. So when we do lose somebody at the hospital, we, we, we get mad when they don't try enough. 
We get mad when they don't do enough. Oh, you could have saved this person. You're trained to save this person. But we got to look at the reality of it. There are circumstances that happen that are outside of doctor's control in order for them to be able to save everyone. But in this particular situation, it, I didn't feel like this was an accident. I felt like it was somebody who got impatient. We don't know exactly what happened. We don't know what the, the mother could have done in that situation or did in that situation. We don't know exactly everything that the doctor did in that situation. We don't know what was said in that room. What we know based on the information that we got is that a baby was ill-delivered and that it was hidden. And the fact that the hospital tried to hide it, went through great lengths to hide it so bad, is a mission of guilt. So it's not a mere accident. If you end up getting sued for that, okay. That's the risk you take when you own and operate a hospital. That some malpractice is going to happen and somebody's going to get upset. No matter what. But out the other end, people got to understand doctors aren't 1,000% perfect. But it's the fact that they hid this from this couple. It's the fact that they hid what happened and then try to dissuade them from investigating. Hurry up and cremate the body, okay? And do the, and allegedly this has happened. You know, cremate the body. Don't try to do the autopsy. Now they said the guy at the funeral home, I think it was a funeral home director, but somebody at the funeral home peeped them on game that how the baby died was not natural. That the baby was basically de decapitated. So if it wasn't for them pushing that initiative and getting their child to be buried without being cremated, they never would have found out that that happened. But it's, it irks me that the hospital tried to hide it instead of dealing with it and fixing it. And now you are the way you are. And now that's the reason why a lot of people are probably not going to go to that hospital. So now you're losing more money being greedy and selfish then if you could have just went ahead and fixed the situation, made a public apology, said what happened, and say that we're going to take better measures to make sure that this doesn't happen again, or we're going to go through better training. It's like now that we've been through this situation, we know what to not to do, and we know what to do. But instead of taking that route, they did what they did. So like I said, I, I pray to ancestors. I pray to creator look out for his family um, during a time of grief. I hope they do win it. Because the hospital shouldn't have done what it did. And we're going to pray for the child so itself. You see what I'm saying? And um, I pray that in, in due time that the family will be at peace. You know what I'm saying? But right now, it's... Yeah, I understand where they're coming from. Nobody wants to lose a child. I don't have any children, but nobody wants to lose a child, whether the child is just born or whether they had the child for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. Nobody wants to lose a child. That's not the order of life. Life goes where the parents go first. The generation before you goes first. So nobody wants to lose a child. So I can't I don't I don't know the pain that they're going through, but I do. I do pray for them. And um. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign off. I want to tell everybody to be safe out there. And these hospitals, they got to stop doing this. They got to stop with the lies and the cover-ups.